Hello. Thanks for listening to this presentation. And thanks for the organizers of the successful KDD Multi Dataset Time Series Anomaly Detection Challenge. In this video, I'll present our efficient and flexible time series anomaly detection framework, SAW Detect, which is the winning solution of KDD Cup 2021. My name is Jixing. I and my partners Jin and Shu are from Deep Blue Technology. If you have any questions or require more information, please feel free to contact us. Here is the outline of this presentation. We will first introduce the importance of time series anomaly detection as well as some examples in this competition. Then, an overview of the whole framework will be presented, and we will demonstrate how our framework stands out from the others. Multiple kinds of algorithms implemented and used in our solution will be presented in the next few slides. The final summary will go over the SAW Detect framework again. Anomaly detection aims to detect unexpected or rare events items in the data. It is commonly used in many industrial applications, such as operation maintenance, industry monitoring, product price online monitoring, etc. However, many challenges exist in developing an anomaly detection tool, especially when high-level automation is required. First, there are many kinds of anomalies. Plots on the right show two types of anomalies, namely point anomalies and collective anomalies. Generally speaking, point anomalies are easier to be detected, while many algorithms lack the ability in finding collective anomalies. Second, there are many kinds of detection models, and researchers keep on developing new ones. How to build a framework making these algorithms work together is also essential. Thus, building an efficient, generalized, and flexible time series anomaly detection framework is desired. We are glad to present our framework SAW Detect. Let's first have an overview of the whole framework. In the beginning, the input time series is analyzed to extract basic information as well as period, which is important for algorithm requiring window size. Then, the time series signal is processed through different models. Details of these models will be discussed in the following slides. All models generate time series residuals, which are passed into the evaluation and ensemble module. These residuals are standardized to be comparable and weighted sum to produce the final residual. Weights in this step are determined by the degree of confidence, which indicates the confidence of a model in detecting anomalies in this signal. Finally, the anomaly location is determined by this final residual. Our framework shows the ability to leverage the power of different detection models and detect anomalies in an automatic manner. Let's go through the details of the algorithms used in SAW Detect. This slide shows how we find the period of the signal automatically. The idea of this algorithm is to try to find periods from the location of the peaks which have similar intervals. First, we find peaks in time series with a gap distance. In other words, only one peak is considered within the gap distance. Secondly, we calculate the period score, which is defined as the standard deviation of the peak intervals divided by the square root of the gap distance. The steps of 1, 2 are iterated repeatedly with different gap distances, and all scores are recorded. Lastly, we find the minimum period score. The corresponding gap distance is considered as the period of the signal. The denominator term in the score calculation tries to find the maximum gap with the same peaks. Ideally, we could find the next peak from one peak right after the gap distance. For example, this plot shows a typical example of a time series signal. Cross orange marks represent the detected peak values. As can be seen from the plot, the intervals of the peaks are about the same, and we extract this distance as the period by using the discussed algorithm. Details of this algorithm are also written in the pseudocode on the right-hand side. The following slides will discuss the models we used in detecting anomalies. In order to find anomalies, effectively and efficiently extracting normal patterns from noisy time series signal is essential. These patterns can have different periods, amplitudes and are mixed together, and thus hard to be extracted. 
As we all know, the Fourier transform is widely used in signal processing, while it is rarely seen in time series anomaly detection. If we consider the Fourier transform maps the signal from the time domain to the frequency domain, which allows us to perform some frequency filtering to remove noise or anomalies, preserving the main pattern. Bottom plots show the original signal and transformed signal in the frequency domain. The sharp peaks in the second plot indicate certain frequencies from periodic patterns. Comparing to other machine learning methods which require training and updating, Fourier transform-based method is fast and interpretable, and effective to most types of anomalies. More specifically, we implemented three methods. 1. Low-pass filter-based method. We process transformed signals within the frequency domain using a low-pass filter, which gets rid of noises including anomalies, then transform processed signals back to the time domain, followed by calculating residuals with original signals within the time domain. 2. High-pass filter-based method. We process transformed signals within the frequency domain using a high-pass filter, which gets rid of main frequencies and gets noises with anomalies, then transform processed signals back to the time domain. We can regard the processed signals as residuals. 3. Smoothing-based method. We perform smoothing for transformed signals within the frequency domain, which allows us to remove noises or twisted frequency signals. Then transform signals are processed back to the time domain. Then residuals are calculated by subtraction with original signals. The plot on this slide shows the results of the above Fourier transform-based methods. The top plot is the original signal, and the bottom three are the residuals calculated from the methods we presented in the last slide. Red dashed vertical lines show the location of the anomaly. Although the anomaly is hard to visualize in the original signal, all three methods successfully detect the anomaly, with low-pass and high-pass filter methods work better. The matrix profile, MP, is based on the concept of distance profile. If we take a snippet from original time series data with a certain length, and slide it along the rest of the data, we could calculate the Euclidean distance between the snippet with data at the current position building up the snippet's distance profile. We repeat the above process for every snippet across the data and building up a collection of distance profiles. By taking the minimum value for each position across the data, we could build up the matrix profile of data. If the snippet is not unique, we can find at least one position that makes distance profile equals zero, or close to zero in the presence of noise. In contrast, if the snippet is highly unique, Matches will be poor and all overlap scores will be high. The plots on the right show an example of the process of calculating the matrix profile. As we can see, the green pattern and blue pattern have similar shapes, resulting in low values in the matrix profile. Meanwhile, the anomaly around 1550 is unique in this array, leading to a relatively high value in the matrix profile. Based on the previous discussion, we realized that matrix profile can be used for detecting anomalies within the time series data intrinsically since each point of matrix profile represents the uniqueness of each snippet, which can be understood as the probabilities of each snippet contains anomalies. During the KDD competition, we noticed that almost all the signals are periodic, and their periods can be one of the best candidates for snippet size. In our method, we calculated the period of each signal, and get its matrix profile, which can be regarded as the residuals. The bottom plot demonstrates an instance of the result of the matrix profile method. In this type of method, we treat this issue as a regression task. Samples are regenerated to fit the regression schema. A sample can be generated based on each point, which label as the base point and the features are the points around this base point. Here shows an example of how the sample is generated. The red hollow circle is the label point, and data points from red lines on both left and right sides are concatenated as features. We called it dual side regression. We used the samples in the train set to train the model, and then predict the test set. 
The difference between the predicted value and the real value in the test set is regarded as the residual. In principle, any regression models could be used with this setup. We tried a variety of models, such as GBDT, Ridge Regression, LSTM, CNN, CNN, and finally chose GBDT and CNN for best accuracy. How is the method comparing to forecasting? It's similar, but forecasting only uses previous knowledge to avoid leaking. For the anomaly detection task, we could use both previous and future knowledge. Why there is a gap between the base point and feature points? In terms of input, anomalies are multiple consecutive points. If you directly take the points around the current point, you may get abnormal points, which will affect the model prediction. So we take the point whose distance label is greater than the gap as the input. Simple methods also work well for certain tasks. The second order difference method is the one we used in the default setting. The first order difference is to subtract the value of the previous node from the value of the current node. The second order difference is based on the first order difference and continues to make difference. The first order difference reflects the change of value which is called the growth rate. The second order difference reflects the change in the growth rate. The change of growth rate can better find outliers. The advantage of this method is that it is sensitive to point anomalies and very fast, due to its localized property. While the drawback is it lacks the ability to find collective anomalies. Besides the methods we used above, we also tried some other methods. They are also suitable in our framework, but not used in default settings due to some weaknesses we will discuss in the following slides. Variational Autoencoder, VAE, performs an encoding-decoding process, which compresses the input information into a constrained multivariate latent distribution to reconstruct it as accurately as possible. Thus, it's intrinsically able to find anomalies during the reconstruction process. We tried to use CNN as encoder and decoder. It works well for some files and is able to extract hidden latent features. However, it requires manual fine-tune and costs lots of time. Here show some other methods we have tried. One is directly subtracting smooth signal, moving average, from the original signal, but it only works for easy and obvious tasks. We also tried methods like finding the wrong period of the patterns or processing first order difference. However, these methods only work for some specific tasks. After the modeling module, we need to leverage the advantages from different models and combine all these results into the final prediction. As we mentioned, at this stage, each model produces a time series residual. We used weighted sum for the ensemble and weights are determined by the degree of confidence of the models which is defined as the value of the highest peak of the residual divided by the value of the second highest peak of the residual. This value demonstrating the confidence of the certain peak as an anomaly, which is designed specifically for the competition as there is only one anomaly per file. Alternatively, we could use other strategies for more general cases, for example, the highest peak divided by the standard deviation of the residual signal. This residual ensemble strategy solves the problem of how to take the advantage of different types of models, and produce a more accurate and robust result. In short, we have developed an efficient and flexible time series anomaly detection framework, and a variety of new and effective algorithms. A highly generalized ensemble strategy was also implemented to determine the final abnormal location. The scheme at the bottom shows the entire process. Thanks for watching.